Thank you for the invitation to speak. I'm a member of the special year, and I do representation theory. So I want to tell you about something called the causal duality phenomenon for the Hecke category. The Hecke category already came up in uh, the talk of uh, Topoga on Wednesday. But let me start with the Hecke algebra. The symmetric group has a presentation like this. You can take as generators simple uh, transpositions and they satisfy all well, they square to the identity and then you have braid relations. The Hecke algebra is a deformation of the group algebra. So in the case of a symmetric group, you still have the same braid relations on these generators HI, but now you deform the cojoint relation in this way. B is here uh, an indeterminate. You see that if you put B is equal to one, then you recover uh, the relation HI squared is equal to the identity. And this you see an algebra that has the same, it's, it's free over a uh, Laurent polynomial ring. It has a standard basis labeled by permutations. And when you set B is equal to one, you recover the group algebra of SN. So this can be defined for any vial group or even Coxer system. And in addition to the standard basis, there's a very important basis called the kajian lucid basis, which encodes combinatorial information on uh, representation theory of the, the theoretic objects in character to zero. So for instance, you can take a semi-simple complex Lie algebra and its highest weight modules, and it's known that the characters of these things uh, can be given in terms of kajian lucid polynomials. So that's a, um, that's a, a, a quite old story by now. But um, more recently, as Torah told you, there is uh, a P analog of this for um, positive characteristic P. And there's some P canonical or P kajalistic basis of the Hecke algebra, again, giving you combinatorial information on now characteristic P representations. So these are things we would really like to understand. Now, I want to talk about causal duality, but uh, let me start at the Hecke algebra level again. So at this level, this is just a, a ring involution of the Hecke algebra. I wrote the quadratic relation in this way. And so you notice that if you send HS, now S is just a simple reflection of a, a vial group to itself and V to minus V inverse, then this exchanges the two factors of this relation. And so this defines a ring involution. This uh, fixes the standard basis, but sends the kajian lucid basis to some similar basis. And one observation is that if you set V is equal to one, then minus V inverse uh, goes to minus one. So you, there is no ring involution of the, of the group ring of the vial group that completes this diagram. So one slogan you might say is that this ring involution is giving you some symmetry of the vial group that only becomes visible after turning on this deformation. So it's something a little bit subtle. Now let me go to the Hecke category. So let's take a, a connected reductive group over uh, C, Morel and maximum porous, so that uh, its vial group is uh, W. And then uh, you can consider um, the Borel acting on the flag variety. And so you have uh, the category of B equivariant uh, sheaves of complex vector spaces on the flag variety. And this is a monoidal category, meaning so you can take two complexes of sheaves and there's some product defined, the convolution product. And this categorifies the group ring of the vial group in the sense that uh, the, the growth in the group as a triangular category uh, recovers the group ring. So there are certain complexes of, uh, of sheaves on the flag variety that corresponds to, say, the standard basis of uh, W. And the convolution product multiplies them together in the same way as elements of W up to uh, passing through the growth unique group. So just like uh, you could deform the vial group to the Hecke algebra, you can also do better. And here, what you can do is um, instead of work with mixed elliptic sheaves and whatever these are, you should think of this as uh, turning on this deformation. Uh, there's a, uh, roughly speaking, there's an additional grading being given by uh, weights of Frobenius. And so here now you, you see the Hecke algebra. So this db mix bgb is a, a version of what you might call the Hecke category. And I said before that the Kajanowski basis or the P Kajanowski basis 
gives you uh, combinatorial information about uh, representation theory. But now here you have a category, not m much more than just a uh, uh, just an object, and so um, you can actually recover um, uh, from this category actual categories of representations. And so one natural thing you could ask is, is it possible to categorify the symmetry, the ring involution that I wrote down earlier? And a categorification of a, a ring involution is uh, an auto equivalence of this category that is more noidal. So it uh, should send the convolution product to the convolution product. So the idea is that uh, just as the, uh, this ring involution gives you some symmetry of the vial group that only becomes visible after deformation, if you had such an equivalence of, uh, uh, of this category, then it should imply some symmetry of representation category that only becomes visible after turning on the subtle mixed gradient. And this, this kind of phenomenon is uh, called called visuality. So it, it, it turns out you cannot do this, uh, but there's something even more interesting that happens. So this is not historically how it went, but um, there's a theorem of Bezerkovnikov and Yun, which says that um, the Hecke category for the Langlands dual group, G check, is related to not the Hecke category of G, but uh, some other uh, rather technical category. And um, you can actually uh, recover from this some um, deep results about a category of representations of uh, complex semi-simple Lie algebra or of a uh, quantum group that are good of unity. So I think that this is really um, a, a fundamental but a rather deep fact about, um, about Lie theory that I want you to really try to understand. And what I want to do today is to um, explain um, some recent work of uh, my collaborators and I that try to demystify this category on the right hand side. So this theorem so far is uh, all in characteristic zero. Uh, we're working with uh, sheaves of characteristic zero coefficients. But for application to modular representation theory, you want some version of this duality uh, with uh, coefficients in a field of positive characteristic. And the problem here is that you know, things like mixed elatic sheaves just don't uh, behave as nicely. Uh, there, there, there are much fewer tools that you can work with. And so one slogan is you try to replace geometry with some homological algebra. So here's one step, so the definition of uh, Achar and Rish. Instead of um, working with etal sheets, you define as uh, some um, notion of mixed category with a uh, positive characteristic, uh, complexes of what are called parity, parity sheets or parity complexes. And in characteristic zero, this is the same thing as uh, sums of shifts of, uh, uh, oh, I probably skipped this part, but intersection cohomology sheets, which uh, are things that, that categorify um, the Kajanlistic polynomials. And here's the um, demystification that I was referring to. So this is a, a mod P and some algebraic version of the earlier result of Bezerkovnikov and Yun. I still have the Hecke category for the Langlands dual on the left-hand side, but on the right-hand side, I instead take derived K bimodules in the Hecke category for G, where K is some algebra object in the Hecke category. Okay, so I replace this complicated geometry that was present on the right-hand side uh, by this homological algebra, which still is complicated. And I think that this is a really striking uh, form of uh, um, uh, it's a Langlands dual reconstruction. It says that you can start with the Hecke category and you can recover the Langlands dual Hecke category in this kind of uh, somewhat sim uh, simple way. And actually, it makes a lot of sense. This object K is uh, a causal resolution uh, that you can think of as, as killing the torus part of this Borel. So it's a natural thing that uh, you might try to do if you wanted to pass from Borel agrarian to 
involving the unipotent radical as in the geometric definition of Bezer particle theory. So um, the, the theorem in this form is actually not in the literature yet. That's uh, in work in preparation of uh, myself with Matt Hogan camp. But there was a, um, a this builds on um, earlier work, a joint work with Achar, Leach, and Williamson. And um, in, in those papers, we use this combined with um, many other advances in modular representation theory to, uh, to um, approve the Reich Williamson conjecture on character formula for um, a decomposable protein module, so reductive proofs. So this, this really does imply some, um, some deep facts in representation theory, modular representation theory. So I want to just say a little bit about what exactly this right-hand side derived K by modules is. Um, so usually you can define um, the right category of uh, a modules over a ring by uh, saying it's the homotopy category of uh, uh, projective resolutions. So you can do the same thing here. There's a notion of uh, um, a resolution of a K by module. You can take perfect K by modules and then you can um, uh, use the, the usual tensor product over k. But this involves uh, working with unbounded complexes and uh, it's not so suitable to computation, which is in the end in the way that this causal duality was proved. So um, we proceeded kind of in a, in a um, very circuitous way. Um, so instead of resolving a, a bimodule, well, so one way that you can always resolve uh, uh, any module over an algebra by using its bar resolution. And it, it turns out that there's a, uh, uh, um, um, th there's a way of replacing the bar complex with something smaller to get some smaller resolution. Uh, so I don't want to go into this too much, but uh, this is uh, uh, a form of causal duality that's, um, um, especially in the form uh, in papers of uh, Lefebvre Asagawa and Paul Salski and, and Morris and Dubai Burka. And in this language, instead of talking about a resolution, you should talk about some, um, some, some co-algebra object that is causal dual to the algebra object. So uh, when you run this machine, it turns out that uh, associated to this causal complex, this algebra K, you get some co-algebra object, but actually equipped with some curvature. So you, you end up in this way working naturally with some, um, some curved complexes, some curved DG uh, co-algebras and curved uh, module or co-modules over these things. So let me skip this homological algebra. So the hope is that uh, this language duality for the Hecke category will find more applications in modular representation theory. So there are some uh, things I'm still working on trying to relate this to uh, conjectural symmetry and not homology. Uh, there might be generalization to, to uh, the um, coxed systems that are not, not even vial groups. This should be related to some duality of character sheets. Uh, I'll end there. Mackie, are you there? Yes. Oh, uh, sorry, are you done? Yes, I'm done. Oh, okay, let's thank the speaker. Are there any questions? So, can, can I ask you, do you, uh, are you having to deal with uh, uh, formality issues or, or none of that somehow is, uh, you have things explicit enough that you don't have yes. to face the problem? Yes, I don't have that problem. And is that, is that in, I didn't follow from the beginning, finite type or does it, do you have a result for more general Cat Moody? Oh, this is uh, um, for more general Cat Moody. I mean, 
so th this work of Matt Hogan Camp and I that I'm mentioning is um, really just a, a reinterpretation of what was already done in um, with uh, Achar Rish and Williamson. So it's just about um, reinterpreting this category of free monogamic token sheaves that was defined there as um, derived K by modules so for some algebra with K. In your description of this best recovery of Yun statement, there was a, a, a your, your U mod G mod U had a strange dashed uh, quotient. Well, yes, what does that right. mean? So it means you start with uh, sheaves on G mod B mod B, and then you pull back to G mod U mod U, and you're allowed to take extensions of those things. Uh, such objects will all have a uh, unipotent monogram along the torus. Uh, it's the, the fiber of this is not from G mod U mod U to G mod U mod U. And now you take some completion which adds some um, infinite dimensional, infinite rank local systems. Any other questions? Uh, I, no, I, have a, I have a question. Are you, hello? Hi. Yeah, so you, you mentioned there's some uh, uh, possible application to character sheaves. Can you can you explain what what kind of application? Not yet. What, I mean, what, I'm hoping what? to try to connect it to uh, character sheaves. But in what in what way? So what what do you hope? Yes. To? So um, it it seems like this Wi-Fi logo by module so called the Hogan camp should be related to uh, character sheaves. Um, but I so I, I I don't know how this will go yet. Is something that I'm trying to figure out. I hope to figure out this year. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.